Good morning, and welcome to the Amazing Commercial Project. My name is Miss Reed, and I'm the theater teacher at Patrick Henry Middle School. Represent uh, today, I'm going to walk you through the Amazing Commercial Project. This project is all about you using your creativity and your imagination. You are going to create a commercial for a brand new, incredible project that no one should live without. This product is not something that already exists. It is brand new and it comes purely from your imagination. Your commercial can be a live stream on your computer. It can be a film you created on your phone, a YouTube video, a PowerPoint, a Prezi, Google Slides presentation, Pinterest boards, a collage, animated stop action, or it can all be completely drawn by hand. The choice is entirely yours. If you can think of a different creative way to produce your commercial, go for it. There are a few requirements, however. Your presentation must be creative. It has to show your audience an amazing product that does not currently exist. You must tell a story with your commercial, and that commercial has to last between three and five minutes. You must create a mock-up, a brand, a logo, a product name, and a label for your product. And you must thoroughly answer and present all of the storytelling requirements as they are written on the assignment. So let's get started. Now at any time you can pause, rewind, or repeat information on the video. Pause when you're completing a section on the document. But the very first thing you need to do is open the attached document. Okay. Download the document to your device. You will be referring back to this uh, document all week, so you need to have a copy of it that you can easily find, like this one here. Save the document on your device, but rename it using your name. If I were saving the document, I would call it Miss Tammy Reed's Amazing Commercial Project. This is so that your teacher can identify the document for grading when you turn it in. Right, so you're going to save it as your name's Amazing Commercial Project. And then that way, every time that you download something, every time that you upload something, then your teacher will be able to identify it. Okay, you wanna look at the first page of the document. Don't let the strange circles confuse you. They are for a mind map. Now, a mind map is a tool that's used to help you arrange ideas. So you can see there are uh, four circles in each little cluster. The middle circle is where you are going to put a problem and then the three outside circles are where you are going to come up with three different solutions that might help the problem. So what you need to do is think about difficulties or problems that you are having right now or you have had recently. They don't have to be major problems. They can be simple little annoyances if you would like. They can also be huge worldwide issues that are making things really hard for you. But choose three problems and you're going to make a mind map that has a problem in the center of each of these three clusters. Kind of like this. Problem one, problem two, problem three. Now what you're going to do is think of a solution that can fix one of those problems. And you're going to write that solution in one of the three circle areas surrounding the problem. Okay, so you're going to write that solution in one of the three circles surrounding the problem. And then you're going to come up with a different solution for the same problem and write that in the second circle. Then you're going to repeat it again for the third circle. And then you're going to do the same for the other two problems. Congratulations! You have completed the first part of the assignment, the mind map. Okay, now we are going to move on to the second se session. For this section, you need to use your imagination. You've already come up with three solutions for each of the problems, but now you need to come up with something that can solve the problem instantly. You want to think of something that doesn't exist today that just magically could solve one of your problems. It doesn't have to be real. It doesn't even have to be realistic. This is the part where you get to use the magic what if. Come up with a creative and magical solution for that second problem. Oh, the first problem, sorry. Now you're going to come up with a magical solution for the second problem.
And finally, you're going to come up with a magic and creative solution for the third problem. While you're writing these solutions down, you want to make sure that you use complete sentences. This is not a time to skimp on your English language skills. You want to practice writing good sentences, complete, grammatically correct sentences that will help you to become a stronger writer. Okay, so you've got the first solution that's a crazy, imaginative idea. You've got the second solution that's a crazy, imaginative, and wonderful idea. And you have the third solution, which is, oh my goodness, mind-blowing. So what you're going to do now is choose which magical solution you want to use, which is going to tell us which type of problem you are going to solve. And now you're going to come up with a product for that commercial, something that does not exist today to solve this problem. And look at all of your magical and instant solutions. Can you imagine what life would be like if there actually was a product that could take care of that problem? What type of product would it be? Choose that product for your commercial. And you want to use at least three complex, grammatically correct sentences to explain what you want to create why it's a great idea for a product, and how that product will solve your problems. And now you have completed day one of the amazing commercial product. Okay, so now it is time for day two of the amazing commercial assignment. Today what you're going to do is you are going to create a mock-up of your product. This will be what the actual product looks like. So what you want to do is look around your house at different products like bug spray or vitamins or lip gloss or paint. Just some amazing product, some different type of product that has a label on it. You want to make sure that it has that label. You want to look around and find the product names and the logo for at least three projects. So this one right here is called Inca Gold. That's the name of the product. And the company that owns Inca Gold is called Viva. That's a little logo here at the very top of it. So Inca Gold is the name of the product. And Viva is the name of the people who own Inca Gold. Okay, so what you're going to do is describe the colors, the shapes, the fonts, um, etc. for everything that you see on that particular project. Does it have a slogan? What is that slogan? Hey, I'm going to use my one-a-day vitamins for the example here to look at because the Inca Gold is a German product and I can't read German. So, first thing we want to look at is the colors, the shapes, the fonts, right? I see kind of a sunburst around here. I see the colors white, orange, blue, black, and silver. A little bit of yellow even. Uh, the font that just looks like a standard average basic font. Um, what kind of shapes do I see? Uh, the, the starburst. I see this little circle thing down on this side. Um, and I see, of course, the rectangle and then another rectangle inside that that says some more interesting things. Does the product have a slogan? This uh, product slogan is actually one a day vitamin for women. Um, so the product and the slogan are the same because you only have to take one a day to meet all the requirements. Okay. And um, the next thing you want to do is look at your second product. And you want to do the same thing. What kind of shapes, what kind of colors, what kind of um, fonts do you see? Uh, right here you see this little lightning bolt here. And the slogan for this product is kills bugs dead. And the, the colors are red. And you see that little picture of the bugs that are lying on their backs because they're dead. Um, so that's a way to make the product really interesting. Okay, and then uh, for the last one, I'm going to show you the Jurgens Lotion. Jurgens Lotion has the interesting colors. It has black and cream and kind of a dark pink. 
It's got the original scent on it. The slogan is long lasting moisture for beautifully soft skin. And the uh, graphic on it is that little picture right there. Okay, and the next thing you want to do is look at the label itself. It's going to be a different font or symbol or color scheme for the brand and the company's logo. On the one of Dave Vitamins, the company logo is a bear logo. It's a little teeny tiny slogan, and the way that it's set up, it has bear written this way and bear written that way in a circle of white. On the Jurgens, you can see that little Jurgens uh, cursive J at the top of it. That is the company logo. And on the raid, this is a Johnson company. So you can see the Johnson logo up there. And um, there's a slogan for the Johnson company. It says a family company. So this poison right here is really good for your family. It's trying to Okay, so that font and that symbol and that color scheme for the brand or the company logo, um, that is the next thing that you're going to describe. Remember, when you're filling out your forms, all you have to do is pause the video and then you can continue in your work. Okay, so after you've seen all of the colors, the shapes, and the font for the logo and the colors and shapes and the font for the brand, now you need to come up with a logo for your product. Now your logo is going to be different than your product name because your logo is your company. You own your company. So this logo or symbol has to represent you in some way or another. Okay, you want um, you want to um, find a product in your house that is going to be your product. So you can choose anything at all. You can choose any size jar. You can choose any size thing. If it's going to be an app, then you can choose your phone. You can choose um, a bottle. You can choose a box. You can choose a container like this. It doesn't matter what you choose. What matters is that you choose something that your product can be in. Any item in your house that looks similar to what you imagine your product will look like. You can also use a box or a package to represent the product and you're going to create a new label so that it looks like a different product and you're going to put that label on the package. So what are you going to use for your product? Describe that product completely, including colors, shapes, sizes, scents, sound. Describe the product using all of your senses. It will really help a lot when you're creating your actual commercial. Okay, so it's time to be artistic. Create a logo for the company that owns your amazing product. This is your company, so it's a logo that represents something about you. This is the company or corporate branding that will include the logo and the slogan for your company, like the Johnson, a family company. That's what this is here. Choose the type of font, the picture that represents your company motto, and the colors you use. And you're going to draw your logo either by hand or on your computer, but it should be an original logo, not a copy of someone else's work, and it should be fairly small. So choose a shape and draw that shape in and choose the way the font looks on it and make sure that it says something about you. Think in terms of simple shapes and one or two colors, for your logo. So that's the next thing you're going to do is draw that logo into the little box uh, right here, or you are going to draw it on a separate sheet of paper. And remember, you can also do your work on a separate sheet of paper. You don't have to use this form to fill it in. You can write anything at all on that separate sheet of paper. Whee! I'm not pausing. happy dance we are moving on to day three okay so today you are going to create an outline and a storyboard for your commercial um, we're going to start with the storyline remember to include all the storytelling elements you need to have the initial incident the conflict 
the rising action, the climax, and the resolution. And at the very end of your commercial, you're also going to create a disclaimer. A disclaimer is that legal mumbo-jumbo they say at the end of those drug commercials that list possible side effects of the product and things that may go wrong because of the use of the product. Okay, so now you are going to start creating um, your uh, outline. The first thing that you want to do is the initial incident. This is the first indication there might be a problem. This is not where you say, oh, this is a problem. This is in terms of what we can see first that will draw them in and get them excited about the product. You want to appeal to the viewer quickly, but this is a time to show the viewer that something in the world is not right. So you want to keep it simple and you just want to describe what the viewer will see here. So initial incident, the viewer will see a man lying on the street, looking sad. Okay, keep it simple and describe. And then the next thing you're gonna do is the conflict. Now this is where we know for certain there is an issue that needs to be solved. You wanna show the viewer here that the problem is real and the problem is important. Even if your solution isn't real, the problem is real and it's important at least to you. Make sure you use really good visual language here. What will the viewer see that makes it apparent this really is an important problem that desperately needs a solution? Okay, then we're going to go to the third element, which is rising action. This is where you raise the stakes. Show us why the problem needs to be solved and not just needs to be solved, but it needs to be solved now. You want to use visual language. What will the viewer see here? Okay, then um, we're going to do a second element of rising action. So number four is actually raising the stakes again. Yes, this is another reason this problem needs to be solved. What will the viewer see next? And make sure that it looks worse than what it did before. The viewer should really begin to feel bad that the problem is not solved yet. And then you will raise the stakes again for a third time. The third reason this problem needs to be solved. What will the viewer see now? This section would show the viewer that this problem has to be solved right now, soon. And if it's not, utter chaos and horror is going to happen. We need to fix it. And then we come to the climax. And this is where you present the solution to the problem. Each part of the rising action has to be addressed and fixed with your product. This is where we see exactly how, your, how amazing your product really is and how it can make the world a better place. Every issue about the problem has to be addressed here and it has to be conquered with your product. So describe what the viewer is going to see for each issue that your product will solve. Okay, now we're going to talk about resolution. This is where the viewer finds out that they can actually get this project and what low price the product is going to have. Um, you can do this by putting a phone number, a web, web address, several locations where they can pick it up personally. You want to give them a price but you want to make sure that they know that this would be a bargain at 10 times the low price you are charging. This is also where the viewer learns what magical ingredients were used to make this product. Make sure the viewer knows that they can only get these pure and high quality ingredients from your company and let them know how much better your product is than any other option out there. This is where you toot your own horn and you talk about this amazing product that's going to fix the entire world. All right? And once you've done that, you're going to move on to the disclaimer. Now, the disclaimer, like I said, is that thing they do at the end of the drug companies. You're going to quickly and quietly talk about all the ingredients used in the product and any side effect they may cause and you need to downplay this part because these side effects are worth it to solve this terrible and important problem and feel free to over exaggerate here. Think in terms of those drug company commercials that say very quickly at the end that the product may cause problems worse than the original problem that is being solved by the product. 
can describe what the viewer will see here. You want this to go fast. You want it to go really super fast. You want it to go so fast that the viewer may not even be able to read it before it's gone because you don't want them to know what terrible, horrible things your product is going to do. This is a paid commercial, so you really do because this is the part where you can be really funny. Maybe this project will cause blindness in everyone under the age of three. Maybe this product will um, create more smog than there currently is now and will increase it by 10% every five minutes. I don't know. Just make it something bad that your product will do because this is where you get to be silly. Okay. So you've got your outline, you've got it figured out, you know that this is going to happen, and then this, and this, and this, and this, and this, initial incident, conflict, rising action one, two, and three, climax, resolution, and disclaimer. You've got those eight different things that are going on, so you know how this is going to go. So now you're going to start doing your storyboard. And you can do your storyboard by drawing, by collaging, by creating Google Slides, by creating a PowerPoint solution, a Pinterest board, or any other way that you like. You have to have at least one picture for each of the storytelling elements, which shows what is happening for that section. This is sort of like a comic book layout for what's going to happen in your commercial. So think in terms of the comic. Sometimes you see this really close-up picture. Sometimes you see something off in the distance. Sometimes you see the cloudy things uh, around the edges that let us know that this is a memory from way back. Um, sometimes you see the little thought bubbles or you see the little talking bubbles. Um, you're, you're kind of doing this comic book layout about what's going to happen in your commercial. And once you've completed your storyboard and you have at least eight sections to your storyboard, then you can go ahead and submit today's assignment. So this is kind of an example of what a storyboard is. It's like a pictorial presenta uh, presentation of everything that's going to be happening. Okay, this is another example of what a storyboard looks like. You can see the kids in the kitchen talking to mom and they have the little dialogue boxes saying what's going on. And uh, the serial right there is actually saying stuff. And then at the end, we see the product. So that is a commercial style storyboard. Okay, this is a storyboard from a cartoon. Notice how it has the, the beginning and it goes through all the different things that are happening and it's all happening in order. For your storyboard, you are going to need to create at least eight slides because you have to cover the initial incident, the conflict, the rising action one, two, and three, the climax, the resolution, and your um, disclaimer. And when you're all finished with that, you are going to share your document with the teacher. Okay. Now, we are at day five, and this is the part where you're actually writing out your script. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your outline and your storyboard, and you're going to put them together, and you're going to create a step-by-step. -step. First this happens, then this happens. You're going to describe every scene. You're going to... Um, uh, you're gonna you're gonna write everything out. So look at the example of a screen of a, a script in your document. You can see how it starts off with the explanation of what is going on, and then something changes. So they write that in, and then the lights change. There's a blackout. The screen rises. And then there's a sound effect. The music plays and the lights come up on Boxing Cat. And then we hear in a voiceover, Boxing Cat, Boxing Cat, Boxing Cat, Boxing Cat. And then the lights slowly fade up on Micah, center stage and Taylor stage left. And the Boxing Cat continues a punching bag and the announcer's voice fades out as if it's being turned down. And then Micah speaks. And then it says, I don't know. Aren't you a little tired of cat videos? And every single line that somebody says, every time it changes characters, you have to change it up. And you also want to notice that the, um, the format of the script 
is very specific. It includes stage directions. It includes light and sound requirements. It includes descriptions of some of the characters. So think in terms of what type of voices you're going to need to sell your product. You can do this with a voiceover where it's one person talking as the, dia uh, as the slides dialogue. <laughs> Sorry, one person talking on the slides. Dialogue where two or more people are talking and having a conversation and explaining what's going on. Or text, giving the viewer a chance to read the information for that section or it can be a combination of all three of those things you need to describe what's going to work best for each section and you want to write that script accordingly write it like a play script include character names light and sound cues actions of characters dialogue and you have to write at least three pages of the script because your commercial is going to last at least three minutes one typed page of script roughly translates to one minute of time Handwritten scripts will require a little more because two pages handwritten equates to one minute of dialogue. But this is just an estimate, so time your script and make sure that it meets all the guidelines. Place a line after each time a person's talking or moving or when a sound or light effect is listed. These spaces let you know something new is happening, someone new is speaking, and make sure you're using proper punctuation and grammar. Okay. Once you get your script done, go ahead and read through it and time it and make sure that it's going to last long enough. Now, you don't necessarily have to do all the voices while you're reading through it, or maybe it's just all in text and you want to read it out loud, and that's okay too. But make sure that it lasts at least three minutes. Okay? So now you have your script. You have your storyboard. You know what's going to happen, you know when it's going to happen, so now you're going to take all those elements and you're going to put them together to create your commercial. Now, if you choose to do a live or a film commercial, then you're going to use the script and you're going around and you're going to go around and film your commercial. You're going to take your phone and you're going to go into your kitchen and you're going to record your mom saying, oh my goodness, look, all these dishes are messing up the whole house. And then move to your brother, oh, hide, mom's going to make us do the dishes. And then Put it on your tongue. <gasps> no, not the ditches. Okay, that's the initial incident. And, uh, you know, you, you're just putting it all together and you're filming it. And that's how you're going to create the commercial with the, with the video. Um, the dialogue, the sound effects, and all the character requirements are going to be right there to create the commercial. And all you have to do is just film it and then put it all together. But any editing that needs to be done, that's going to be up to you. There are several programs available for free online that will allow you to edit your work. But I am not a film person, so I can't tell you, oh, you have to use this one because it's amazing. Because um, I don't know. Uh, this is my first time working with an actual video, and I'm having a heck of a time getting this one edited. But if you want to film your commercial, then hopefully it's something you already know how to do. Okay. If you choose a PowerPoint, a Prezi, a Google Slide, or Pinterest boards, you have to create at least 18 slides or boards, and each of them must have at least one graphic or picture. Now, you can draw these pictures out, or you can just find pictures that show the idea that you're presenting on that particular slide. The average slide takes about 10 seconds to read if there are pictures, and too many words on one slide makes the audience go, ah, I don't want to read that. There's too much. Your storyboard is going to be a great starting point for a presentation. You can use your script to create the words and add in the sound effects. Um, but you're going to need to add in a few pictures and slides to your storyboard if you don't already meet the time requirement. It's really easy to decide where you need another slide, though, by the number of words in the text. If there is one sentence, that is good. That's one page. That's one slide. If you're having two sentences on there, you're pushing it, you might want to create a second slide and find another picture. So use the script to choose additional pictures from online that show what the viewer should see. If you choose another sort of presentation, all you have to do is just make sure that you meet the three minute requirement. After putting everything together, you're going to watch your commercial. You're going to answer the reflection questions on your document which are right here. Um, and uh, when you answer those reflection questions, make sure you use complete grammatically correct sentences. 
And then after you do that, you're going to show a family member or a friend your commercial, and you're going to time how long it takes for them to watch the work. Then you need to make any changes that you think will help make your commercial better. And then finally, you are going to self-critique using the commercial rubric. That's the very last page on this dialogue. Commercial presentation rubric. The time is the first thing you get points for. The reason that it needs to be that long is because you can't make sure that you have all of that other information in there if you do not have it at least three minutes long. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So now you're going to self-critique your commercial using the commercial rubric. And finally, you are going to submit that commercial to the teacher. The commercials can be shared in YouTube, in Google Docs, or they can even be uploaded to the classroom. However your teacher likes it, that's how it has to be done. All right. And that was the amazing commercial project. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs>